this video, basically what I would like to do is I'd like to um, talk about um, the logic of positivism, uh, at least in one paper, of Rudolf Carnap. Um, him and Mark Schlick were foundationalists that um, were one of the main ones of the logic of positivist era of 20th century epistemology following um, following Bertrand Russell, Gottlob Frege, um, G.E. Moore, um, and Ludwig Wittgenstein. And that's, you know, the in the Vienna Circle, and, you know, following, you know, all that, all that stuff, you know, this, this, there was this, there was this logical positivist era, which is like a renewed, a renewed empiricism, um, you know, a different empiricism that is, you know, 20th century epistemology and, and uh, philosophy of science, which is renewed empiricism, which is different from, like, Locke and Hume and uh, Berkeley. Um, in this video, I'm going to discuss Carnap's paper, um, the elimination of met of metaphysics through the logical analysis of language. This is an awesome paper, and it's, I think it's one of the one of the best papers of the positivist era, um, which is really really awesome to read. Um, except except for if you like if you like the phenomenology and um, you know the stuff of like of like Heidegger, then he bashes some uh, he bashes Heidegger in this paper. But anyway, this is um, this is about this was in 1932, I believe, and in 20, 1928 was when he wrote the Logische Aufbau der Welt, or the logical construction of the world, and um, in that what he did is, um, he, he is a foundationalist in that he wants to build knowledge off of sense data. Sense data, if you didn't read uh, G.G. Moore and Bertrand Russell, it's just, um, um, if I look at this cup, it's a certain patch. I see a patch of a certain size, color, and shape. You know, I see. You know, I'm not thinking about it. I'm not thinking about it as as it's a cup. I'm th I'm th th thinking about it as the colors, sizes, and shapes that I'm seeing. You know, I'm seeing um, I'm seeing red, blue, yellow, etc. And I'm seeing cylindricalness. And you know, uh, there's this question of protocol protocol senses. You know, and that's basically like the uh, observation statements. Like I see a green. A green patch with a certain size, color, shape, at right now, and then I and that and then I write it down at a certain time, um, you know, and I write these things down about a certain thing, a thing I've seen, you know, it's that's a a protocol it's a, that's a protocol statement. Um, so we have, you know, this linguistic thing also. Uh, this is part of the linguistic turn of philosophy. This is the the uh, logical positivist era, positivist era was. Um, and basically, it um, it's that we don't talk about it as it's a cup anymore. That's the that's the thing language, and we and we and we reduce it to our sensory events. We reduce it to, to talking about the cylindricalness, the redness, and the blueness, and all and all that, and all that stuff. You know, we're talking about the sense data only, and as everything I see as sense data, and then we build up from that to, 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 talk, to talk about things, to, to talking about um, arithmetic and physics and other kinds of science to build up knowledge about things in the world, you know? That's what, that's what, that's what science does, and that it's, it's, that's why it's philosophy of science and it's epistemology. So, that's what this is doing. In the Logica, in the, in the Logica Alpha der Welt, Carnap basically dealt with translations between the language of, of talking about sense, se, these sense data into, th into the language of, of talking about things. <clears throat> and it has to do with just the translation between those, you know, in the, the big problem of the logical, of the logical positive is we're trying to get like a perfect translation between those two. We're trying to get a perfect, perfect translation of things we see in the sense data way of talking into the things we see in the way of talking about things. It's just a big, big, big issue of talking about a figuring out how to figuring out how to translate it from one way of talking to to another to another another way of talking, and that's why this is a part of the linguistic turn of, of philosophy, if you will. So I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna, jump, I'm gonna jump into the paper and try and cut, bring this together while while this matters, and this this he, he does eliminate metaphysics through language, and we're talking about metaphysics 
of like, you know, this is nineteen thirty, the early thirties. So we're not we're not we're not talking about the metaphysics of like today. We're talking about like Heidegger, Hegel, um, Fichte. You know those, no, um, those uh nineteenth century philosophers, and beyond those, and and uh, beyond there, who say some things that might be hard to might be hard to understand for for people today because you don't really know outright what they're saying. And he talk he he cites um, Heidegger as philosophy is metaphysic, uh, or or what is what is metaphysics, and he criticizes that big big time I would say. Um, first he says that that metaphysics, it isn't false, it isn't sterile, but it's meaningless. Everything it's everything it says and does it's meaningless, and it and it asserts nothing. It's just um, a pseudo statement basically. It's it doesn't constitute. It doesn't constitute a statement. A, uh, a pseudo statement does not does not give you a statement, and a pseudo statement does, doesn't assert anything. And there's two kinds of pseudo statements. There's those that um, have perfect. There's there's they have perfect syntax. Now syntax is you know the correct way to put words together. Like you know I don't I don't. Um, I don't. I don't say. I go. I go fridge. Now, forever. You know. I don't put words together like that. You know. That's. You know. That it really doesn't really it really doesn't make sense. You know. Like he says later, Caesar is ant. What does that mean? Because that's wrong. Since that's wrong syntax. Is way wrong way of putting words together. So we have meaningful words that, that we that, that we put together in, in wrong in wrong syntax. Secondly, we have the correct syntax, but there's a meaningless word in there, like uh, he gives the illustration, which I will discuss here, which is TV and Tubi. Um, statements have to have fixed s syntax. They have to be deducible from something. They have to be verifiable. Um, they have to have imperial criterion to actually have meaning, and it's this, this question of meaning, like what what is meaning, and he kind of is giving this a little, a little bit. And he does talk about protocol statements and how they refer to the given, and the given is just, is just another word for sense data, or sensory sensory experience. Um, yeah, and then he gives this phrase like, the, 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 he says that the meaning of a word is determined by its criterion of application. Um, and if it if it if it doesn't have one, then it it can't be used because he it, it, he denies the legitimacy of of its use. And there he has the illustration of two words, TV and Tubi, and he he does different things with each. We have TV, T E T E T E A V Y. Something is some things are TV and some some are not. He says, um, if there's no empirical signs of, of TVness, then we don't have. A, and we don't have a criterion of application, then there's no legitimacy of using the word TV. Um, and that's just that's the that, that that's the main point of using of ta of talking about TV is that if you know um, he kind of he kind of you know played some some, some cards that that's a that's a metaphysician that's a metaphysician before him have you know saying, but he says that well if if the word has no criterion of application then you you can't you can't use it. Next we have two v. Two v he says is to to say that to say that something is two v is to say that to to say that it is quadrangular. Two vness is quadrangularity. Um, nothing else can be intended by, by by the word two v other than saying that it is quadrangular. Um, so statements, you know, the the they have to have known empirical. Cry criterion and you can't if you if you if you use a word to intend a certain thing like if I if I if I if I embed in a word uh, if I if I invent a new word cup and I think about it as this then I can't mean it I can't think of it to mean any other thing you know um, you know he, he played the um, meta, the uh, metaphysicians card in the paper and said well this thing also has some signs of uh, tubiness, but it isn't quadrangular, so you really can't use it in that in in the in really 
any other way than what is than what it is intended to be used as. Um, yeah, statements to have meaning they must have an empirical empirical criterion. It has to be deducible from from something. It must have truth conditions, and it must have a method of of verification. And there's this big, you know, um, logical positivist um, chant, if you will, that um, to have conditions for for the justification of a word or for a, or or a statement is to have truth conditions for it. Is to have meaning conditions. Is to have verification conditions conditions as well. So meaning conditions, truth conditions. Uh, verification conditions and justification conditions are, you know, the similar thing. It's about verifiability or falsifiability. Falsifiability, which he doesn't really talk about. Falsifiability, just verifiability. Ver 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 There's the verifiability in the criterion of application. In 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 general, it must be verified empirically to have meaning. Um, and. That the words TV and TV are talking about um, pseudo statements that um, that have a meaningless word in it. Now he moves to pseudo statements that are just have bad since have bad syntax. Um, you know that he gives Caesar is and that is bad. It's bad syntax, and Caesar is a Caesar is a prime number. Um, it's okay. It's okay syntax. But the the what it is to be a prime number cannot be attributed to a to a Roman emperor. It can be attributed to a to a person at all. Um, so that's still a pseudo statement because it's still bad syntax, and it kind of comes down to uh, two two different kinds of syntax and why we should move towards this other kind of uh, this other kind of syntax. Um, and that's when he he quotes Heidegger from Was ist, from Was ist Metaphysik, or What is Metaphysics? Um, and he's, he's talking about the nothing. And if you took any class in phenomenology and or, or existentialism, you know, you will probably read that. It's like a little essay by Martin Heidegger. And he quotes a lot of it, but he quotes the, the, the phrase where he says the where where Heidegger says the nothing nothings, what the hell is that is it, is it, is, that, is, that, is that supposed to mean? And um, you know that's just a problem because I mean if you are if you are reading it within the context of reading Heidegger, you will it will not have too much of an issue with it. But if you're being if you're going logic if you're going logic positivist on everyone, this doesn't this this doesn't work. Um. So he kind of ridicule he kind of ridicules them pretty pretty bad. And he says that language is logically defective because because pseudo statements can can arise um, without without violating s syntax. And we have the grammatical syntax, which is, you know, the typical things of our of our language of every language that that prevents us from from saying things like Caesar like Caesar is and it you know it prevent it prevents you from saying things like that. It 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 it, it doesn't let things like cease, like cease, cease Caesar is and to to arise. Um, so he says that we should have a different a more stronger kind of logical syntax, which wouldn't allow these bad syntax pseudo statements to arise. Um, and then he he a little later he um, critiques Descartes. He says that existence is not a predicate. Um, you know, I'm just kind of, I'm kind of, I've kind of wrote things down to, in order to kind of, you know, skim over the, bit, some 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 of the things. But one thing that is worth noting is he says that the the question as to whether existence is a predicate. Now, redness and um, so the um, so the concept of being a cylinder, those are predicates that can be had, you know, um, but can, you know, can existence be a predicate? And if not, Descartes' uh, cogito argument doesn't really work because 
he says, I think, and I'm doubting all these things, you know, after the first, me- after the first meditation, he's like, well, in the, uh, s- in the second meditation, he's like, well, I've been doubting all these things, so I cannot really doubt that I exist. So he says, I think, I, I, I am, I exist, so I doubt, I must be. Um, and the thing he should say, he should say that something is thinking, so something must exist. And he can't really attribute that, that predicate to himself. Now I could probably talk about that, you know, um, that little thing in, in the Chrono Saber for a while, because I think it's neat. Um, and then he says that there, there are four things that we should not do anymore. Um, we should not do any more within the field of of uh, philosophy and science. We shouldn't do anything. We shouldn't talk about any kind of speculative, meta, me, any kind of spe- speculative metaphysics. That being, you know, um, a let you know some kind of knowledge via pure intuition or pure thought. We can't do have. We can't do any any metaphysics that transcends that that transcends experience by means of a special inference. We can't do any do any philosophy of norms or value. Thus, we can't do any we we can't do any axiology. We can't do ethics. We can't do aesthetic, aesthetics. Um, and we also can't do we can't talk about realism and its opponents or like f- f- phenomenalism, idealism, solipsism. You know. Um, but what is left over then? You know, if if we've taken all this stuff out of philosophy via, via you know. Um, logically showing that that all of it is is meaningless. What is left for the task of philosophy? He says that it's a it, that what that what is that what is left over is the method of logical of, of logical analysis. And there's a uh, there's a positive task and a and a negative task of this. So the negative is to eliminate meaningless words and st- statements. The positive part of it is clarifying me- min- meaningful concepts and propositions. And he kind of has some really neat quotes. You know, he's kind of even more and more bashing him. Um, meta- he says that metaphysics only only ex- expresses attitude of a person toward life, and it doesn't have any sta- have any states have any states of affairs or any actual dis- descri- descriptions in it. And he says that that metaphysicians are musicians without musical, uh, without without musical uh, without musical ability. Um, those are I think it's pretty pretty neat all that is, um, because that, I think that's pretty true. But to to an extent, because I'm kind of I'm kind of on the side of people he's bashing, but then I'm kind of on his side too. It's kind of hard to explain my view on it. But anyway, um, so. How is he having these little linguistic frameworks? He has linguistic frameworks because he's trying to clarify meaningful words. But he, he he still is in, in a way emphasizes the importance of tra- of going of translating from um, translating from the way of talking about sense, sense data. And moving up towards towards towards, towards, towards talking about things, and translating further into talking about arithmetic, geometry, and mathematics, into higher levels of science. And the structure of knowledge for Carnap is found is is found is foundational. Um, you know, and that, in a word, I, I'm going to try to give you a. little bit of a diagram with it. So, what is... I'm not, I, I want to show you my shitty sh- 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 diagram. Um, anyway, um, he say, states that pr- that protocol statements are the foundation of all of, 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 of all of, of all knowledge and all science. You know, it's all about that. Um, 
and a observation statement written down is basically a, a, a protocol statement, and that he's he's foundationalist in that he's making the protocol statements the foundation of all of all sci- of all scientific and co- commonsensical and all knowledge, what and all knowledge whatsoever, and that is why he is a empiricist. That this is why logical positivism is a, is a new true empiricism, um, and it's. This is my, my I, I mean, it's, and when we move towards higher levels of knowledge, what we're doing is we're translating to, 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 to different ways of talking. We translate from, you know, talking about pro, the, about the protocol statements, about, you know, sense, about the sense, the sense, the sense data, about, about all, all that stuff, and we translate into higher levels you know, and we that you know with the sense data as our foundation, we we move higher and translate into things into talking about things, and then we and then we, and then we, and then we translate into higher l- linguistic frameworks of um, of uh, um, mathematics and science and just you know knowledge about higher things and more and more important things. So he's done, you know, a few different things. He's done. He's shown that the metaphysics of uh, philosophers before his time, you know, and and also dur- during his time, people like Heidegger are, you know, are talking meaninglessness, and they're, you know, he's kind of given an an idea of what meaning is. He's you know he's kind of shown basically a, a lot of what the logical positivist chant is about truth conditions and verification conditions and ju- and justification conditions and such. Um, and he's also <clears throat> he's also um, given you a very foundational way of coming towards knowledge in a scientific fashion. Um, if you have if you have any questions, please comment on the side here. I believe I believe it's all on the side on the like below here. <clears throat> and I would be glad to discuss it with you. And if you think I missed something important in this essay or this article, I should I should say, tell me. I would love to discuss this with you.